Hi everyone, this is Shelly and welcome to Life Creates Art. And I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. Today we're gonna to be talking about finding your style, your individual footprint. And those styles can change over time and things like that. But if you're seeking to find your style, we're gonna be talking about that today. And uh, we also are gonna have a little interview with an amazing artist, Serendipity Tinsley. And I'm so excited to have her here. She's a young artist and she is already just really moving towards uh, finding her style and she's terrific. And so I'm so happy to have her here and welcome her here today. So I hope you uh, join me and here we go. everyone, Shelly here again, and I am so excited to be talking to you about finding your style today. We are going to be welcoming Serendipity Tinsley, and she's a high school student and an amazing talent, really amazing talent. And I'm so excited to talk to her because she, I saw some of her at work, and she has uh, kind of honed herself into really putting her uh, feelings onto the canvas and I'm excited that she is so young and doing this already and learned how to do that. So finding your style, uh, expressing yourself through art. The one thing to find your style is you cannot force it. If you're, if you're anxious about finding your style, then you're kind of putting yourself into a box. I want you to be free and, and explore different things. Uh, but then again, what, what is, excites you? When you go to a museum, when you go to an art show, or when you look at art online, what kind of art excites you? Is it, uh, is it Frida Kahlo? Is it Picasso? Is it Dolly? Uh, that's incredibly exciting to me. But is it Monet? Or maybe O'Keeffe? Or uh, maybe Andy Warhol excites you? So whatever it is, you go and you learn about what they did and how they proceeded with finding their style, but don't try to copy. You are not a copy of them. You have a unique voice and a unique footprint that you want to take and you want to put on that canvas. And that's what you're trying to find. So although I spent some time uh, sort of copying the style of those that I loved uh, because I wanted to kind of get into their head, but then I have to take what I've learned and I have to put it into me and my own style and have my own heart put, be put on a canvas or in a sculpture. And so I want you to do the same thing. So what excites you? Is it, uh, is it the surrealism? Is it impressionism, abstract and all of that? You have to take a look and you really have to determine where your uh, desires lie and then run with that. And then maybe those are gonna change because sometimes your style will change through the years. I mean, I'm telling you, life is a journey and sometimes it can get really messy, but it is a beautiful journey and you have to keep going and those styles are gonna change. When I was uh, mm, roughly about 25, I was painting just, just traditional portraits and I was doing sort of Thomas Kincaid-ish paintings, but it taught me a lot going through that. I want you to do whatever comes to you. I'm re I've really learned to go with what is flowing out of me and what is, uh, I'm paying attention to what is flowing out of me. When you paint, when you sculpt, when you do whatever, please understand that it is a relationship between you and that canvas and allow that to speak. Because finding your style, uh, you sort of put yourself in the box when you're seeking that. And in order to find your style and really discover it, sometimes you just need to let it flow out of you. And, and then all of a sudden you'll go, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I think I'm gonna paint more of this and this and this. And so you keep going. I had a situation years ago, it's about, probably maybe seven years ago now, where I drew a, a portrait of my daughter, but I drew it in this sort of funky way that I had never done before. 
And it was one of those aha moments where I looked at it and I realized, wait a minute, I may have something here. And then I painted it and realized, yeah, I really do have something here. So guess what I kept doing? I started sketching and sketching and sketching in this new line and this new style, but that was just about five years ago, guys. And now I do commissioned paintings in that style. And I tell people stories uh, when they ask me to paint them, I put their story into the painting and things like that. You have to just keep pressing on and allowing that relationship between you and that canvas to continue. Let it speak to you, let it talk to you, let it tell you where it wants to go. Let it tell you what colors it wants to be. Sometimes I sit there and I, I am stuck and I can't figure out where I wanna go with a painting. And so sometimes I have to just take time to allow that painting to speak to me. Sometimes I have to step away and sort of glance at it and look at it. And so allow that to happen, just let it come. And don't be so caught up and so concerned about your style. Little things will start to pop up. Little things like um, if you start painting faces or if you love painting clouds, if you love painting trees, Things like that will start to pop up and then you can run with that. And maybe that will be your style for that time of your life and allow it to happen. Matisse said, uh, he's an artist, of course, and he said an artist should never be a prisoner of themselves, uh, never a prisoner of style, never a prisoner of reputation or a prisoner of success. And so don't be a prisoner to your style. Keep sketching, uh, keep working hard, keep uh, painting and working through those frustrations and don't get discouraged. Don't let that little person on your shoulder tell you that you're not good enough because you are good enough. Keep going, keep pressing through. Try new styles and try new mediums. Uh, on this channel, we're gonna be trying a lot of new things and study the artists that you love. But don't get stuck in, I have to find my style. Don't force it. And I'm really, really excited again to be talking with uh, Serendipity Tinsley, who has really found her own voice at such a young age. And I'm so happy about this. So enjoy, and I'll see you soon. Okay, well, welcome everybody. And I'd like to introduce Serendipity Tinsley. Hi. And she is an incredible 18 year old uh, artist and just amazing. I went to a show over at the school. She's a senior this year and gonna be graduating soon. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, and I saw her art and I was really, really quite moved by it. I was moved by the fact that, that a, someone so young, <laughs> yes, artist, someone so young really had such an incredible voice. And it was really, really powerful. I was really moved by her art. So serendipity, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. I'm happy you're here. You're my first interview. Awesome. I'm honored. <laughs> okay, so how did you start to get interested in art? You're 18 years old, and when did you start getting interested? Um, I watched a lot of cartoons. When really? I was, yeah, when I was little. I watched a lot of cartoons. Well, a lot of us watched a lot of cartoons. Right. <laughs> what did you do with that? Um, I would try and draw the characters over and over again oh. until I could imitate the cartoon uh-huh um, and then as my teachers saw that they were like wow now do it with original stuff so Good. as Good. i continued to um create my own worlds i let my imagination soar and my art just went from there <laughs> wow wow okay that's terrific so you basically what i love and i tell everyone on life creates art that sketching is incredibly important so that's what you were doing for oh, yeah. these years is you just were Sketching and drawing and sketching and drawing. Oh, yeah. And then whenever I would get my hands on something, a new medium or something mm -hmm. like that, um, I would use it until every lot, like my uh, oil pastels, I used until it was like at the very end. And the nubs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'd, I'd go. <laughs> so you explored lots of different kinds of art. Oh, yeah. I like to be a jack of all trades, kind of, which is why yeah. I'm in like performing arts That's as right. well as traditional yes, arts. Yes. And, yeah. So, okay. So you, you explore different kinds of art, which is kind of the, the premise of this channel, too, is that we're going to be exploring lots of different kinds of art. So I love that. I love that because when you, when an artist gets stuck, 
they can always sort of jump to something different that can start that creative flow again. Yeah. But have you ever found that happen to you? Oh yeah. Have you gotten well, stuck? Oh yeah, all the time. And then I'll be like, well, that's normally when I try out something different. Um, when I'll or I'll revisit something I haven't done in a while. Yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah. Just recently, I got super stuck in art because we had just finished our huge final and I had nothing to do. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have- Where do I go? I, yeah, so I went yeah. back to watercolor, which I hadn't worked in in a long time. And I cranked out a few pieces and found my spark. <laughs> you found your spark, yeah. awesome. That's See, fun. yeah, that's, that's really, really important. It's really important, uh, everybody out there, that you, that when you feel like you're getting stuck or when you get frustrated, just keep moving forward. Like you always hear me saying, and don't give up and just jump to something else for a little while. And then you'll find that spark again. How did you find your unique voice in doing something like that and taking something familiar and making it your own? Um, I like to put a twist on a lot of, I like to be unique. There you go. I would really like to be unique. When I see something that inspires me, mm -hmm. I could be like, that's awesome, but this is what I could do. You know, like that's yeah. amazing in that type of a, of a way. That yeah. it's, it's amazing as that, mm, that piece. That, that piece, yeah. exactly. And then I can think, how can I build off of that? Or how can I take similar techniques too? Mm -hmm. A lot of techniques I've used. Oh yeah, absolutely. See, that's, that's the great thing also, something serendipity has just said, is that you can take a lot of the artists that you love and you can sort of draw from their techniques. Oh, definitely. And then you can take that and put it into your own art. Uh, so I was really moved by your story. Um, and so tell me how you sort of, because right now you're kind of in a, a, a dark sort of period, and I understand that, and <laughs> yeah. that's fine. We're not always going to stay in the same style our whole lives. Oh, so, no. so where is this drawn from? Because it's about putting your life into art. I like to put not necessarily references to myself, mm -hmm. but things that I know um, I've felt or like emotions that I've been through okay. or I've portrayed, like this is where acting comes into handy. Um, so a lot of facial expressions that I draw or a lot of feelings that I've had, of course, artists can vent through their art. Like mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody's done that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's, that's a huge way of putting myself into my pieces. Mm -hmm. Even if it's something that is like animals. Like I draw a lot of animals. Great. We're, we're going to be talking about that too. <laughs> oh, later so episodes, animal drawing. Oh, oh nice. that's great. That would be a good one. <laughs> um, even if it's like not obvious that this is a facial expression that I can make and it's like a blank stare of a cat. If somebody will be like, what do you mean? That's an animal. It's still an emotion that you can put into when you're painting it. And that's, yeah. that is something that I channel all the time. Okay. So that's how I feel like I, I put my experiences into my art, whether mm -hmm. or not people notice it or whether or not um, it's obvious to somebody who didn't make the piece. Right, well, people that are tuned into it do notice it. They get it. You, yeah. you feel it. Like yeah. when you look at my pieces, Absolutely. you're like, I understand this. And yeah. it, it makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, so when you paint, how do you, how is your flow? How, how do you? Music. Music. Okay. Oh, yeah. Music. Music. And you can tell pieces that I don't listen to music on because they're very still, which is like, it makes Interesting. sense. Interesting. Um, uh, a lot of my painting paintings, like my sketches are different because my sketches I have fast hand mm -hmm. um, and I can do in class. That it's practice. And, yeah. yeah. But um, when I do full projects, I definitely have to put on a playlist of what the art is of. So if it's yes. like a battle of some sort, I'll put on some like rock music or yeah. stuff like that. Like yeah. I have yes, just, exactly. just playlists on playlists of different moods. Exactly. I actually talked about that in the do's and don'ts. Get your music out. It helps. <laughs> it does. It does really help. Are there certain times where you can and cannot paint? Oh where yeah. you find you can and cannot paint? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, there's like a sweet spot of when I'm just emotional enough, not like emotional but yeah yeah I have a strong enough feeling or can imitate a strong enough feeling yeah but if I'm like over the top I can't pick up a pencil because I know I or I won't be happy with drawing I won't be happy with painting I won't be happy with anything and sure. that'll just 
spiral into like a negative spiral and I don't like that. So there's definitely a time where I need to have motivation and no motivation. To sort of step. Exactly. Meeting in the middle. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the sweet spot is when inspiration takes over, of course, mm -hmm. when I'm like, that's it. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Light bulb exactly. over your head. <laughs> or you can clearly, I'm sure you've had it, you can clearly picture what you want to create. Mm -hmm. Right? And that... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I t actually talked about on this episode uh, about how it's a relationship between you and the canvas. It's really, you, you. sometimes you have to step back and allow the canvas to speak to you. Oh, yeah. Um, do you ever find that? I, I talk to my canvas and I say, okay, what do you want to be? Where do you want to go? What color do you yeah. want to be? <laughs> right? I, I <laughs> definitely have done a version of that where I'm like, no. Like, yeah. you know, like, you, yeah. you kind of, you have to cover up some parts and, yeah. like, yeah. get a feel for everything. It's definitely, like, um finding the uni unifying factor mm -hmm. of the piece that takes the most time, I feel. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, talking to a painting is something <laughs> that I, I feel like I, I give it looks. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh yeah. Oh, I get mad. I right? get mad. Yeah. I'm like if you, if you paint something and you know that you painted it, like the technique is correct, but it doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, well, why'd you do that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. I totally get that. It's, it's definitely a relationship. So, where are you heading next? Because I'm I'm looking forward to seeing you're you're 18 years old, and yeah. I'm really looking forward to just really following your career and seeing where this all takes you. Because truly, I'm I'm amazed by what you do. Thank you. <laughs> I'm heading to Cogswell Polytechnic College oh, in uh, yeah. Milpitas, and oh. they are a um, it, the simplest way to say it is they're a video game specific school. Okay. Um, I'm getting my bachelor's in digital art and animation. Nice. So I want to be a concept artist for video game companies. Hey, Blizzard. Yeah, hey. <laughs> hey. Um, <laughs> I love doing, I love designing worlds and characters and taking things into consideration, like when you're building characters. But that's side yeah. Note. Now, did you did that all stem from you sort of creating these worlds from cartoons when oh, you yeah. were a kid? Yeah, the cartoons, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, oh, a okay. lot of story writing. But yeah, I'm heading into um, for your college. It'll nice. be fun building my portfolio of, with yeah. people surrounded that are like minded. And yeah, absolutely. I'm very excited. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm excited for you again. I'm I'm so happy you're here, and thank you so much for taking the time. You guys, Serendipity Tinsley, <laughs> you so much. so precious to me. <laughs> and just a, a really, I can't even say a budding young artist because you are an artist and you are. Um, but one more question before yes. I go is when you feel sad or get down or feel discouraged about your art, is there something that you do to get past that? I look at my successes. I, and this may be a little narcissistic, but it it makes me it's not. it like it, it it makes me like yeah I did that. Well, if I can do that, then I know I can do something even bigger. Yeah. So yeah. I let my past successes fuel my future inspiration. Very good. Very good. Well, those are words to live by, everybody. <laughs> so yeah, when you when you feel down and feel sad about your art, just take a look at what you've done before and and look at your accomplishments because you guys are worthy and you can move on and you can do this. You can keep trudging ahead. We're all in it together. That's why I'm here with you. Serendipity is here with you. We're all in this together. We all go through ups and downs as artists and we want to we need to stick together. Remember I told you to get a couple of people that you trust. Don't put it out for everyone to see and ask for their judgments. You get a couple of people that you know can look at your work and won't judge it, but just help you discover what more you can do or what changes you can make. Constructive criticism. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Serendipity. Thank I'm you so, so much. Happy. I'm so happy you're here. Okay. Uh, everybody, I'll see you next week. And uh, we're going to be doing some techniques, uh, just some acrylic techniques, some really basic stuff because I'm really gearing up to tell my story. So the next week is gonna be my birthday week 
and I'm going to be telling my story and uh, why I put myself into my art. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe. Woohoo! Check me out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right.